illusion shattered. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm a fish. Burn. <laughs> ah. yeah. There is no escape. Fight this off the time. Didn't expect to see him here. You know him? He's Razak, a senior of mine at the Academia. He's a scholar too? Is he the kind that holds up in a forest and mumbles stuff about training? No. And that's the problem. Razak was never involved in any of those things. He never trained in the forest, let alone reach Satyavada life. Leaving that question aside for the moment, him being here alone means that we might be too late. Looks like they've already taken everyone away. For whatever reason, they left Razak here. Perhaps they simply didn't have time to come back for him. Hmm. There are drag marks on the ground. They're clearer by the doorway. Someone was forcefully drawing a cart that was loaded with something heavy. Loaded? With... people? That is one possibility. Hmm. It looks like they were in a hurry, as if they were afraid of being caught. In their haste, they failed to notice Razak hiding in a corner. 
The symptoms are identical. Looks like we found living proof. Huh? Why do you say that? Allow me to jog your memory. Recall your time at Port Ormos. Don't you think his symptoms look familiar? Correct. The Academia is behind all of this. It isn't difficult to deduce their rationale. First, the Academia spread a false rumor of the Scarlet King's resurrection, emphasizing the role of the village keepers, the mad scholars who were exiled to Aru village. These rumors were all the persuasion that the radicals needed, and those based in Aru village leapt into action. Unbeknownst to them, of course. Through rounding up the scholars, they were actually helping the Academia. As well as being able to exploit the Radicals for their own ends, this scheme has one further advantage to the Academia. All the risks and responsibilities are offloaded onto the Scarlet King's followers. Life for the Desert Dwellers has been brutal ever since the Scarlet King's death all those years ago. Beneath the surface, feelings of desperation are widespread. Many would give everything they have for the prospect of something better. Anyone looking to exploit that for their own ends simply needs to make a few empty promises. Even if complications arise, people will see that those involved are all followers of the Scarlet King and look for no further explanation than differences of belief. A deep-seated mistrust of the desert and everyone in it by the rest of Sumeru will make sure of that. The notion of an academia plot wouldn't even cross their minds. It may seem like a simple strategy, but it is able to work wonders under Sumeru's current circumstances. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. It's in line with the village chief's theory, too. But there's still one very important question. Wasn't it the academia that brought the scholars to Aru village in the first place? Why does it want them back now? Throughout this process, one thing has changed. The scholars' identity. First, they were scholars. Then, they became lunatics. After that, they were exiles. And finally, they become missing persons. An exile is still patently a living, breathing human being. But when someone becomes a missing person, that is brought into question. If you can't find someone, you have no way of knowing what exactly happened to them. That makes missing people an ideal resource. Resource? For what exactly? One possibility is that the information in their brains could be extracted into knowledge capsules. Extracted? You mean, canned knowledge comes from people's brains? With the technology of the Sumeru Academia, it's entirely possible. Perhaps the process caused them great suffering, which is why they cry out in the dead of night when no one is watching them. So... The human brain... Nope! Nah! -uh. Hyman doesn't want to think about this! I'm the Academia Scribe, after all. I'm familiar with their projects. Anyway, judging by Razak's state, the contents of a divine knowledge capsule were extracted from his mind. But, something went wrong in the process. Or perhaps, his curiosity got the better of him, and he used such a capsule for himself. Uh... Hyman's a little confused. Can they just use anyone's brain? The look on your face tells me you've realized the answer. That's right. To some scholars, gaining knowledge about the gods is their entire life's pursuit. Extracting canned knowledge is just one of the extreme measures they turn to. However, I can't help but wonder. What do they seek to gain from divine knowledge? The academia is going out of their way to look for forbidden knowledge, but what is their ultimate goal? I've spent quite some time trying to analyze the contents of the Divine Knowledge Capsule, but to no avail. 
It seems like my way of thinking is too different from theirs. You mean, you're not even slightly interested in getting your hands on this forbidden stuff? All scholars seek to expand the horizons of knowledge. But I'm not particularly interested in gods, so I don't share their degree of zealotry. Extracting information from people as if they were lifeless objects? <laughs> if this is the direction of academic progress, then the academia may as well shut its doors. Sounds like you're really against all this. Of course. The academia's actions run contrary to their rules. Whether it be academics or knowledge, everything has its boundaries. If those lines are crossed, the rules and order that govern everything in the world will be destroyed. This matter needs to be corrected. Just like fixing a typo in a book. Wait! Didn't you step in to help because you felt sympathy for those poor people? Not to be callous, but no. My criteria are a little more restrictive than that. There is no shortage of suffering in Sumeru, and the same can be said for the rest of Tevat as well. What do you plan to do about that? Save every last person? Um, probably not. Uh, Paimon's not sure. You can say that. Simply put, I don't blindly place my faith into strength or heroism. I do what I want. The Divine Knowledge Capsule is something I want to investigate in full. That doesn't mean I'm willing to take action for the sake of a few strangers. Paimon's been wanting to say this for a while. There are a lot of bad guys in the Academia, but you're not one of them. You're their weirdo. <laughs> You're probably right. Though I must say, I quite enjoy this feeling of being the odd one out. Uniqueness is also an asset, is it not? Wow, that's a great way to think about it. Paimon's really impressed. If only Miss Shani had a similar mindset, her life would definitely be a lot easier. I'm just a more likable person than her in general. There's nothing more to it than that. <sighs> He won't last long if we leave him here. Let's take him with us. We'll work out our next step after we return to Aru village.
We're back! You must be tired. You should rest and take some water. What's the situation? Hmm? Who's this? Unfortunately, somebody who's too young to take on the role of Isak's grandfather. Nevertheless, he's one of the people we're trying to find. So, at one point in time, the abandoned Elizar Hospital served as the Academia's site for extracting Divine Cant knowledge. Yep, pretty much! Their plan must have been implemented at some point before we arrived at Aru Village, since Divine Cant knowledge has been in circulation for a while now. Yet, they fled once we were headed to the village, almost as if they knew we were on their trail. Why is that? We may have a mole in our midst. One of us could be secretly revealing our whereabouts to the Academia. Huh? Are our friendships that shallow? Hmm. <sighs> Looks like none of you have realized wherein lies the issue. Sino, you're the reason why they can predict our movements. Choose your next words very carefully. It is simply a logical inference. I have my reasons. So what you're saying is... Sino's the mole. Interesting. And here I thought you were the most suspicious one, I'll hate them, Since you were always acting alone. I know. You have a point. But I realized something as we were returning from the hospital. Sino isn't like any of us. What are you trying to say? Do you still remember who you are, General Mahamatra? <laughs> As a Matra, you are no doubt privy to certain kinds of information. Before you can take action against someone, you are required to have all the facts available, including the less than savory details. Simply put, the Academia has traditionally allowed you access to a wealth of sensitive information. Knowing their modus operandi, wouldn't you expect them to take precautions against you? If you want to raise a vicious wolf, you need to make sure that you can avoid its bite. The Academia is monitoring me? It's not that simple. The Academia has eyes all over Sumeru, but they have a special protocol for dealing with you. Every so often comes a Nyagarbaha day. On this day, the Academia enters new information into the Akasha through knowledge capsules. I remember seeing the thick notebook next to the control panel once. Its contents were all about the General Mahamatra, his activities throughout the day, preferred methods of enacting judgment, everything. You're saying that the Academia entered my information into the Akasha too? But what's the point in doing that? My actions aren't important enough to be added into the Akasha. The Akasha is capable of computation. <sighs> the Akasha's algorithms are entirely capable of predicting your movements using the data entered. When you would depart, the route you would follow, your destination. It knew all of this. It predicted my every move. The Academia has been watching you longer than you think. So that's how it is. Sino adheres to his principles so strongly that he's actually a thorn in their side. Tenacity of will and steadfast faith are worthless to the Academia. They need scholars who are easily pliable and mindlessly go after anything they can profit from. Sino, don't take it to heart. This just proves how much of a trustworthy ally you are. <sighs> they escaped because of me. Don't blame yourself. It's not like any of us would have known. I have an idea. If they predicted my movements, then I might be able to guess where they went. Whoa, you bounced back fast. 
there is always an opportunity for safety after danger passes. Oh, so that's how it is! Paimon gets it now! If the Academia is trying to avoid Sino, then the safest place would be... Yep, that's right! They'll want to proceed in the direction opposite of where I'm going. I must go. There's also something I want to investigate. Let's go, guys! After him! Please, wait! I want to go, too! Hmm... You want to go, too? If so... You have to promise you'll stay safe. I want to find Grandpa. I promise I'll be careful and not cause any trouble. Everyone, I leave him in your hands. Yay! Let's go! Remember to pack some food with you! Paimon feels like we're missing someone, though. Hmm... I'll be awaiting your good news. Please, stay safe, everyone. Yes. After leaving the village, we should head straight toward the desert. I know the desert like the back of my hand. Is that because you play here a lot? Yep. One time, Grandpa almost got lost in the desert. But I was the one who brought him back. There's something here. What's this? It's buried in the sand. Hmm. <laughs> Looks like we'll need to roll up our sleeves and do some work. Oh, and Paimon thought running around everywhere was already enough work. Okay, okay. So, we have to dig it out? Whatever's down there, it looks like it's buried really deep. These are likely fragments of an Academia-developed device, something akin to a headset. Looks like there were more than one village keeper. They must have been escorted this way because there are device fragments scattered around here. Let's split up and search the area. Chances are that we'll find other things nearby. Is this what we're searching for? It looks kind of scary. This is definitely a device used to extract divine knowledge. How did it end up buried in the sand? That can't have been part of the plan. They must have been attacked along the way. Wait, what? Grandpa, I hope you're okay. Don't worry, your grandpa's gonna be fine. Razak didn't display any signs of starvation or dehydration which means that they left fairly recently. We should be able to catch up. One more thing. Given that the device had been entirely covered by sand, I believe the attack must have happened prior to the sandstorm. Let's keep going. 
They can't have gone far. You're flying, aren't you, Paimon? Is flying over sand tiring, too? Ugh, of course it is! Voices, over there. <laughs> it sounds like an argument. Don't get any closer. They'll notice us. Dia's talking with the Aramites? Hmm. <laughs> Very interesting. Let's listen in. If you had informed me sooner, there'd be plenty of room for us to... You're one of us. We would never lie. Scholars. You don't know as much as I do. Need me to... <laughs> I knew it. That's our Dia. Dia? Why would you... Dia! Hey! What are you doing? Huh? Didn't you say you'd help me find Grandpa? Wh Why are you on their side? <laughs> well, look who's here. Ain't that something? Ugh, this complicates things. You've betrayed Aru village? So, this is the great General Mahamatra. <laughs> Dear, you'd be better off as my assistant than hanging around with this motley crew. Seen for yourself, I have the means and methods, and my ideals are far more admirable than theirs. I'm not the type that's easily swayed, Raman. You of all people should know that. Wait! Shut it, Paimon. It doesn't matter. Whichever side you pick, nothing could deter us from the grand mission of resurrecting the Scarlet King. Once our Lord of Old returns to this land, we will have a new beginning. Face the facts, Raman. It's not gonna happen. You should understand that more than anyone. Have all your years as a merc taught you nothing about placing hopes in a ruler? I'm a desert dweller and a proud follower of the Scarlet King. Whether I live by the edge of the sword or in peaceful comfort, my soul will always carry this conviction. It's not too late yet. The village keep... Mad scholars aren't gonna bring the Scarlet King back to life. You don't understand, my dear lady. Pursuing our faith is our purpose in life. Even if the chance of success is one in a million, we must be willing to give everything we have. Even if it'll expose you to the Academia? Even if they end up disbanding the Aramites? Your Aramites, which you've worked so hard for all these years? Yes. We've waited a long time for this day to come. The sun and the moon no longer shine here. All you see now is cracks in this desiccated land. But fate has finally dealt me a hand to play against the Academia. With these scholars in our custody, we'll stomp the Academia's forces and fight our way beyond the wall of Samuel. <sighs> Ridiculous. Think about it. The Academia controls the entirety of Sumeru. Your powers are negligible in comparison. If you still don't believe me, then try asking these two men. They're also against the Academia, but neither of them are as arrogant as you are. <laughs> they look more like pawns of the Academia to me. Why would I listen to anything the people of Greater Lord Ruka Devada have to say? Filthy traitors. Your god abandoned all honor and betrayed the Scarlet King. We desert dwellers will never trust the likes of you. It's impossible to communicate with someone so hostile. Perhaps we should. Do you really believe that by kidnapping the scholars, you'll be able to negotiate with the Academia? These people have no value as bargaining chips, but I could be persuaded to take their place as your next hostage. 
These scholars were exiled from the academia. I, on the other hand, am their current scribe, and will be a much greater asset to you. Wait, you can't be serious. So, you want to trade places with the hostages, do you? Precisely. Any wise person would gladly accept my offer. What are you thinking? What if they decide to kill you instead? Well, that would be bad luck for me. However, I'd get the chance to observe the scholars. Perhaps even find out the truth. <sighs> Think you can talk me over with that confident look of yours? I'm not trying to persuade you. I'm using this as a means of joining forces against the Academia. You are the scribe. What do you have against the Academia? Not all desert dwellers believe in the Scarlet King, and the same applies to the Academia. Why must all knowledge seekers approve of the Academia's way of doing things? <laughs> you Academia scum! Every last one of you is nothing but a hypocrite, just like everyone else on the other side of that wall. I've made myself clear enough. I won't listen to another word from the Dendro Archon's people. Not so fast. I'll hate them. Do you stand by everything you just said? <laughs> I never make empty promises. You know you're making a dangerous decision, right? I do. Good. Raman, hear me out. These people are my friends. Maybe you can't take the followers of the Dendro Archon at their word, but what about me? Do you trust me? <sighs> We've known each other for years. Of course I do. In that case, I'm willing to vouch for their honesty with my right arm. <sighs> Come on, Raman, don't be a coward. If you're serious about taking on the Academia, you need to steal yourself. You can't be afraid. <laughs> An arm from the Flame Mane. You've piqued my interest. But what if you refuse to oblige? What should I do then? No one's a fool here, dear. We're mercs. The mercs don't tend to live long unless they have their wits about them. You're not wrong, but this is different. I promised my friends that we'd bring back the village keepers together. <laughs> Let's do it right here then! Give me your right arm as proof of your resolve. Uh. Don't listen to him! He's not even trying to negotiate! He just wants to make things more difficult! That's fine. Are you crazy? We came here to save lives. One arm for that many people is still a pretty good deal, if you ask me. Raman, I'm holding up my end of the deal here. You'd better not let me down. Sure. Go ahead and cut off her right arm. You don't have to go this far. That's not for you to decide. Do it! Dia, run! <sighs> Stop! What's wrong? Can't do it? Flame Mane, you and I are both desert folk. Cutting off your arm is no different than cutting off my own fingers. Where's the sense in cutting my own kin to pieces? <sighs> You've shown me that you're serious. Go on now, take your friends and leave. Meet me in the desert at noon tomorrow. I was really counting on him not going through with it. Dia! That was crazy! Have you all lost your minds? What if he'd actually cut your arm off? 
Hmm, then I'd just have to hold my claymore with my left arm. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. But sometimes when you're out on a limb, you gotta double down to seal the deal, you know? Don't ever make a promise like that again. I can deal with the likes of them. If it came down to it, you would not lose to them either. I don't doubt it, Sino. But this is about more than me and them. There's a lot more where they came from. Even if we got rid of one bunch of radicals, there are others out there. Wiping them out would do more harm than good. <sighs> As you wish. I'm sorry, Dia. I should have stayed put and listened. I should have trusted you. It's okay. I promised you I'd help find your grandpa, so I'll do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes? <laughs> you just might be scholar material. Huh? Are you serious? The Eremites once said that I was a lunatic. Perhaps a little madness is essential to be successful in research. Why does it feel like he's using his praise for me as an excuse to brag about himself? Okay, let's get moving. We should head back to the village and rest up. Today was just a trial run. Noon tomorrow is gonna be the hard part. <laughs>